Hi everyone, in these notes we'll discuss how to use Shiny to analyze a real dataset, not just something that we've simulated. Since we're going to be looking at how to apply it to real data, it's worth thinking about why interactive visualization is useful for real data analysis in the first place. So if you think about, from a very high level, what is the major difference between doing visualization on paper and visualization on computers? It's that when you do a visualization on a computer, you're able to create a long sequence of visualizations where if each on its own would have made sense, would have been useful, but you learn much more when you look at the full sequence. Right? An interactive visualization at the end of the day is actually just kind of a long storyboard of small static visualizations. This responsiveness is you know, the critical element. So one of the main ideas for interactivity in data analysis is that it can support selection. It can support selection either for rows, so you might want to zoom in and focus on certain observations, or on columns. Right? So maybe you are interested in a, one set of columns at first, but then you change your mind and want to analyze another set of columns. Interactivity can allow you to do both. It can take something that's very complex in both rows and columns and allow you to filter down to something that's a little bit more manageable. So let's look at the application. Before looking at the code, let's just see what, it, what it's going to do. It's a data set of IMDB and Rotten Tomatoes ratings. So all that this is doing is I can search for different kind of genres and I can see what their ratings are. Right, so you can see here the dramas are getting pretty high ratings. Comedy had had pretty low ratings, right? So you can explore this. How is this implemented? Try thinking about it even before you look at the code. We have one output, we have one input. The input's a kind of drop down, output's a plot. The kind of plot is just a scatter plot with two continuous variables. This is the app. It's exactly that. You have an input, you have an output. The kind of input is called a select input. This is what allows you to do the dropdown. The plot output is creating, is calling this scatter plot function that I defined above. And it's filtering the data. Right? So anytime I change this genre's input, it runs this reactive expression. What the reactive expression does is it creates a new column saying whether the movie is selected or not. Right? Is it contained in the genres field? Uh, and then it returns it to scatterplot. What scatterplot does is it changes the size and the transparency according to whether it's selected or not. This idea of changing the encoding depending on what the user has input, this is called conditional input. Okay. So that's one input, one output. What if you want to do something a little bit more complicated? In this example, okay, you can now filter the year. You can continue to filter genre, and you can also filter by rating. Okay, so let's look at the older dramas. Okay. And we can look at more recent ones too. OK, so how is this done? Same kind of idea. I've thrown in a few other inputs. Okay, so now I have a select input like before, but then I also have these check uh, checkbox and slider inputs. But then all that's doing is just, once I have those new inputs, I can just change my reactive expression to filter to that new subset. Okay. So one final version. Let's say we want to have, we want to allow people to see what the name of the movie is. Okay. This is actually not going to be done with ordinary ggplot anymore. The issue is that ggplot creates static plots, but we need some sort of web-based graphic so that we can see um, so that we can see the names. How we can do that? We just change render plot to something called render plotly. Plotly is a library for web-based graphics. Just to do this change, and then telling my my uh, scatterplot function to use ggplotly on top of my ggplot. Once I've done that. It's allowing me to select or hover over and get a tooltip, giving the name of the movie. Okay, so the only change there, I had to change the 
plot to plotly, and I had to wrap my original ggplot in this ggplotly command. Okay, so a final conceptual idea. What we've been doing sometimes is called dynamic querying. The idea of dynamic querying, I like two interpretations. First interpretation is like a database interpretation. Right? So you can imagine you have a big uh, data frame, you can use different kinds of you imagine if you know SQL, different kind of SQL commands that filter to different rows or select different columns. That's all possible programmatically, but they're natural visual analogs. Those visual analogs are dynamic queries. Another kind of less programming kind of interpretation, but more mathematical interpretation is we're basically looking at conditional probability. Right? Like what is this doing is we're allowed to say conditional on a particular configuration of user-specified inputs. What is the joint distribution of IMDB and Rotten Tomatoes ratings? Is the conditional mean higher or lower as I change the years? 